Do you feel it this morning, man? I hope you are excited in here, all right? And I pray that, that you're going to walk out of here this morning, right, with a, with a renewed confidence, okay, not arrogance, but with a renewed confidence in yourself and in Jesus. Amen? If you're joining us today for the first time, we want to say welcome. If you need a bulletin, raise your hands, all right? We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. We're still going to collect tithes and offerings, but we're going to do it at the end of the service because I want to get right into the message this morning, all right? And, and I want to start off by showing you a picture. Can I show you a picture? Do we have that picture? Boom. Does anybody know what that is? This is a picture of Lucky Charms. That's right. But... um. Something is wrong with that picture. Can you tell? My son. Well, Lucky Charms is made up of two parts, right? The cereal and the marshmallow. You see, my son, he will take out all the cereal. He will throw away all the cereal because he only like eat the marshmallows. <laughs> he only like eat the fun part, the colorful part, the flavorful part, the sweet part. He don't like eat the boring and the bland cereal part, right? And his mom will go, son, you, you can't just eat one and not the other. You, you can't. Just eat the marshmallows and, and, and not the cereal because both go hand in hand. You know, here at New Hope Kauai, we believe you got to approach the Word of God in the same way. That you can't just eat the parts of the Bible that is fun and fancy and flavorful. You got to eat the parts that is tough and challenging and, and convicting as well. You, you need sweets and substance, right? And I, and I tell you this this morning because... Um, we're starting a brand new mini-series today. And over the next two weeks, the messages that God has put in my heart, i got to tell you, they're not marshmallow messages. <laughs> they're not marshmallow messages. They're not what you probably want to hear, but let, let me tell you, this is what God has shown me that, that each and every one of us need to hear. Some of you might hate me at the end of this, this mini-series, but you know what? It's all right. Because God doesn't want you to be a marshmallow Christian. Okay? And I'm not talking in your stomach, Pastor. Not in your stomach, boo. Talking in your soul, church. In your soul. Amen? On a little bit more serious note this morning, um, I got a confession to make. I've been hiding a secret in my life for a long time. Pastor, I hope this is okay. And um, I got to confess. I got to get it out. I got to be honest this morning, right? But don't, don't, don't judge me, church. Pray for me, please, because I have a problem. I have a weakness. You see, I... I love, I really love junk food. Why are you guys so serious this morning? My goodness. <laughs> junk food, church. I love it. Not, not like candy and chocolate and sweets. No, no, no. I'm talking like savory junk food. Like, like, like pizza and, and fried chicken and bacon and, and roast pork and cow yuke and tinono with tomato and onions. Oh, does anybody share this same secret with me? Come on. All right, but if I'm being really honest, my, my real junk food weakness is a big old cheeseburger with fries, like a nasty cheeseburger. Like, like I'll go and get a, a double Whopper. Never mind this impossible Whopper. Forget that. I'll get the double Whopper or the, uh, a double quarter pounder with cheese or I'll get a bacon ultimate cheeseburger or maybe I'll go to, oh, you, yep. <laughs> maybe I'll go to Street Burger or I'll go to um, Ono Char Burger or if I really want to get down and dirty, then I'll go to Rob's for lunch. Right? Right? Come on. And I'll get their pastrami burger. Come on. With the egg on top. Come on. And the sweet potato fries on the side. Lord have mercy on my cholesterol. Do you know what I'm saying, church? And I have had burgers all over the country, all right? All over the country. But for some reason, my favorite, and I don't know how to explain it, but my favorite, like when I go to visit my in-laws in San Diego, California, like the first place... We stop when we get off the plane, and the last place we stop before hopping back on the plane is where? Come on, help me if you know. In and out, that's right. In and out is evidence that God is real, right? <laughs> Show of hands, how many of you have never had in and out before? Oh my goodness, are you? Stand up. Stand up. We're going to pray for you right now. No, 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 no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You better go home and repent, girl, something. Church, in and out, in and out is evidence that God is real. There's nothing like the... The simplicity of that double-double with the animal fries. Can I get an amen if you know I ain't lying? You don't know, but they know. I mean, church, that's why I work out so much. That's why I exercise so much, because I eat so much junk food, right? Because truth be told, as, uh, as onolicious as that in and out is, too much of that in and out is not good for you, in and out. 
Too much of that in and out is going to make your inside all clogged up and your outside all messed up, right? Too, too much intake of all that grease going to cause an outbreak of pimples, right? Certainly, church. Too much junk food and you will be unhealthy both in and out. Do you realize life is the same way? That every day, you and I face things that influence us both in and out. That our joy and our happiness is affected by how we deal with things both in and out. That our purpose and our peace is affected by how we deal with things both in and out. And God knows who you really are by looking at you both in and out. Excited this morning, church, because again, we're starting a brand new mini series today, right? And, and the title of this mini series is Can you guess it? In and out. Very good. You see, I'm learning that our significance in life, right, is based largely on our ability to lead our inner self and our outer self. It's based largely on your ability to lead the, the outer you that everybody sees and the inner you that nobody sees. Because both go hand in hand. All right, you, you can't just have a beautiful outer face but an ugly inward heart. You can't just have a beautiful outer appearance but an ugly inward attitude. You, you can't just be strong and tough on, on the outside but weak and fragile on the inside. God wants you to be the same person with the same convictions both in and out. And what's really important for us this morning, church, is that if you and I are going to walk into all that God has called for us, then we need to become experts at recognizing the things in and around our lives that affect us. We need to become experts at recognizing the things in and around us that affect our walk with Jesus, both in and out. Amen? Now, this is a, this is a, a topic that we could talk about a lot of different things, okay? But this morning and next week, we're not going to look at everything. We're just going to look at two things. One today, one next week. These are things that I struggled with. These are things that God showed me I struggled with in and out. And although these are specific to me, God has revealed to me that this is something that each and every one of you can relate to. So I hope you're ready. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Pulikako. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to, to know you better. So this morning, Lord, will you prepare our hearts, will you open our hearts, will you challenge our hearts, and then will you change our hearts. We thank you for Jesus, and we give you all the glory in his name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So check this out. This past Father's Day, Crystal had the kids get me a gift for Father's Day, right? And it was a few days before, and we were all riding in the car. And um, Ava was so excited about what they got for me that she said, ooh, Daddy, we got you something. And I said, what, baby? What did you get for Daddy? And she was just about ready to tell me. And Crystal said, Ava, stop. Don't tell Dad. Remember, it's a secret. I said, you know what, honey? Don't tell Dad, okay? Just keep it a secret. But of course, she's four years old. She couldn't help herself. <laughs> so she just went yelling out, we got you Beverly's. <laughs> and she said, and mom got you Cheeto Beverly's. I'm like, oh, 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 my bad. Shouldn't have said that. Should have kept that a secret. And Crystal said, Ava, I told you. You wasn't supposed to say nothing. That was supposed to be a secret. I said, honey, you cannot tell that kind of stuff. You got to keep that to yourself. You cannot tell anybody. You just got to keep that kind of stuff hidden in secret. And what happened was Elias got really upset. He was like, no, guys, no. He was all upset. I was like, Bubba, what's wrong? What's going on? What's the matter? He said, Dad, God doesn't want us to keep things in secret. Now, maybe he didn't understand the context in which we were referring to, because sometimes keeping a secret depending on what it is, like if it's a gift for somebody, is a noble thing, right? Or if it's something personal and private between you and your wife, like cheetah beverages, right? Keeping that thing a secret is the right thing, right? I mean, I mean, honestly, I feel like we live in a society nowadays where people don't know how to keep anything a secret. Like, like with social media, nothing is a secret. People got to show us everything that's happening in their life. They got to tweet everything on their mind. They got to show us what they had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner again, right? 
They got to show us what their gym looks like again. They got to take another picture of their mirror again. God, I'm past the mirror. You see them. Some of you got that. The rest going to get that later. You see, church, I- I'm, always, I'm always shocked at what some people will choose to expose on social media. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, maybe you should have kept that in secret. Okay, but we're not talking about those kind of secrets this morning. Okay, we're also not talking about how, how God does some of his best work in secret. How just because you don't see it, it doesn't mean God isn't secretly working on it. All right, and we're also not talking about how God withholds secrets sometimes. Because when God keeps a secret, he's just waiting for the right time and the right person for that secret. Okay, no, 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 we're not talking about any of these kind of secrets this morning. Instead, we're talking about the dangerous and unhealthy secrets that you and I keep concealed within us. The dangerous and unhealthy secrets that you and I keep hidden inside of us. You see, a lot of things happen in secret. The truth is revealed in secret. Who you really are is displayed in secret. You do a lot of things in secret. Some of you don't want to admit it, but we know you dig your nose in secret. We know you do. <laughs> How come you think you get big nostrils? Because you get big fingers. You never thought about that. You're just all up in there. And the dangerous church. You see, because we hide a lot of things in secret. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's your secret doubts. Or your secret depression. Or maybe your secret battles your secret fears, maybe your secret insecurities. Maybe it's your secret sins. And the dangers again, church, is that when we keep secrets in, they start to slowly change who we are. I'm excited this morning because what you and I got to know, church, is that we serve a God who doesn't want us to be stuck in our secrets. We serve a God who wants you to break out of your suffering and bust into your healing. That's the kind of God that we serve. Can I get an amen? But, but, but it's going to require something from you. Some of you might not like it, but it's going to require your honesty. Because before you can be healed, you need to be honest. Amen? Jesus understood the importance of being honest when it came to our secrets. And throughout the Bible, we often see Jesus preaching and teaching in parables. Right? And a parable is simply a story that has a moral lesson. And a lot of times, the lesson in his parable was kind of a secret. It was hidden. You have to figure it out. You have to think about it. But Jesus says something so straightforward and so simple to me when it comes to the, to the secrets in our lives. In Luke chapter 12. The secret of Jesus is out. And so everybody's trying to find Jesus. They're trying to get close to Jesus. They're trying to catch a glimpse of Jesus, trying to be healed by Jesus. And in the midst of everything that's happening, all the chaos around him, Jesus turns to his disciples. And he says something so simple yet so powerful. In our scripture this morning, Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 1, he says, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, hypocrisy is claiming to be morally one way, but your behavior shows you're another way. So you are all holy in here, but you are naughty out there. And the Pharisees, who were kind of like the churchy people back in the day, they were famous for hypocrisy, being hypocrites. Like, Like they would act one way when seen and then another way in secret. They would act one way inside the church and then another way outside the church. They were like the congregation's favorite on stage, but the bartender's favorite in secret. They were like um, Christian Willie in the spotlight, but wet Willie in secret. Do you know what I'm saying? And so Jesus is warning them. He's saying, don't be like that. Don't act like that. Don't behave like that. Be better than that. Be honest. Be real. Be genuine. Because he continues and says, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made 
known. There is nothing concealed in secret that will not be disclosed or hidden in secret that will not be made known. In other words, Jesus is trying to say that at some point, you and I, all of our secrets will be made known. And I know he's talking specifically about hypocrisy in this scripture, but when I came across it in my devotions about a month ago, I felt like the Holy Spirit told me that this, this same principle applies to, to all the secrets in my life. All right, so Jesus is trying to teach us this morning that it's better to, to be honest and suffer a little than to keep a secret, to play it safe. It's better to be honest and risk losing some friends than to keep a secret just to save face. It's better to be honest so you can be healed than to keep a secret to avoid getting hurt. Jesus is trying to teach us this morning, church, that, that the journey to fulfilling your destiny requires honesty. Amen? You know, a while back, both, both Crystal and I withheld some secrets from each other for a long time. We married. But we're holding secrets from each other for a long time. So long that, that we felt it was no longer an issue. So long that, that we felt we, we were done with it. But then we learned that just because your secret isn't active, just because your secret is dormant, doesn't mean it's done. Just because your secret is dormant, it doesn't mean you're delivered. Right? And, and we also learned that, that the devil, he tries to trick you and I. He tries to trick us into believing, hey, press, out of sight, out of mind. No harm, no foul. What they don't know won't hurt them. And so you and I mistakenly say, hey, you know what? Nobody going to get hurt because nobody going to know. And the dangers with that church is that it's only half right. I mean, your boss will never know. Your friends will never know. Your parents will never know. Your pastor will never know. Your church will never know. Your spouse will never know. But God knows. Nobody sees, but God sees. And you think you're getting away with it in secret, but the only thing we do in church is, is opening a way for Satan. When it comes to the deadly and unhealthy secrets in your life, God wants full disclosure. All right? Because hear me, he can't help you defeat what you don't disclose. Let me say that again. God can't help you defeat what you don't disclose. Amen? So there we are in our living room late at night, sitting next to each other. Both of us knowing that the Bible says to confess to each other so you can be healed. Yet both of us hesitating to confess. Okay, she would later tell me that, that she hesitated because she was scared. I later told her I hesitated because I was ashamed. You see, half of us, we don't confess our secrets because we are scared of what will happen. Scared that our spouse will leave us. We're scared our kids or our parents will leave us. Scared that our church will judge us. We're scared. And the other half of us don't confess what we've done because we're ashamed of what we've done. We don't confess our dirty thoughts because we are ashamed of what people will think. We, we don't confess the sins that we struggle with consistently because we are ashamed that people will start to judge us and look at us differently. We are either scared or ashamed. And so we say, oh, you know what? I ain't telling anybody. And, and the dangerous church with that is that the devil is smiling when we say that. Because he knows that if you are the only one who knows your secrets, ooh, you are in a dangerous place. If you are the only one who knows your secrets, you are in a dangerous place. Because that means you have no one else praying for you. No one else pulling for you to pull through. No one else pushing you to power through. You have no one else helping you to be healed. And you can't heal from what you hide. Come on. You can't heal from what you hide. Because when you hide, you are pretending to be someone you are not. And God can't heal who you pretend to be. 
He can only heal who you really are. Never forget, church, that confession, confession shatters being both scared and being shamed. Amen? So, so there we are again in the living room, staring at each other. Our hearts are pounding with anxiety, right? Tears are rolling down our eyes. And in a moment of courage, because confession takes courage. And in a moment of courage, in a moment of courageously confessing to each other, God then removed the weight of those secrets out of our hearts and brought healing into our marriage. And now we stand tall side by side, not perfect, but side by side, running straight into the purpose and the promises that God has on our lives. But it required two things from us, church. It required our honesty and our confessing. I'm telling you, hear my heart. If God can do it for us, he can do it for you. But it will require your honesty and your confessing. Amen? As I close this morning, no, this wasn't a long message. But I know it was a tough message. I know because I can tell, but I look in some of your eyes. <laughs> You're saying, yeah, press, I hate you right now. <laughs> but it's okay. Because God didn't want you to just eat marshmallows this morning. And I think it's clear that, that our secret doubts, our secret depression, our secret battles, our secret insecurities, our secret sins, should never be kept in secret. Get them out. Find someone that you can trust. Be honest so you can be healed. Confess so you can conquer. But there is one more thing I know that should never be hidden in secret. You know, after Jesus is arrested, he's, uh, he's brought before the high priest. And the high priest starts to interrogate him. And ask him a ton of questions about everything that's going on. And everything that he's been doing. All the, the miracles he's been performing. And, and, and Jesus says something so powerful. In John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus says, I have spoken openly to the world. I always taught in the synagogues or at the temple. Where all the Jews come together. Where everybody was. And I said nothing. In secret. In other words, Jesus is courageously confessing to the high priest. Hey, look, man, I never hide nothing from anybody. I am the king of kings. I am the Lord of lords. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody goes to the Father except through me. Hear me, church, this morning. The good news of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. Amen. The grace of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. Amen? The mercy of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. Amen? The power and the protection of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. Amen? The peace of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. I'm telling you, when he touches your heart and changes your life, the love of Jesus should never be hidden in secret. Amen? How many received that this morning? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word, Lord. Tough word, Lord. Tough word. But we thank you so much. It's not what we wanted to hear, but it is what we needed to hear. So will you help us, Father, to be completely honest so we can be completely healed? Will you help us to disclose so we can defeat? Will you help us to stop avoiding so we can overcome? Will you help us to confess so we can conquer. And then will you help us, Lord, to never keep the love of Jesus a secret. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Will you give God a praise offering this morning? <laughs> now listen, listen, listen. You got to go home tonight, today. You got to be honest with yourself. 
You got to be really honest with yourself and you got to ask yourself, do I have any secrets? All right? And a quick reminder, next week, if you're courageous enough to come back, next week, we're going to be looking at part two of this mini-series. You got to trust me, it's going to be good. God has already given me the word. So we'll see you next week. Amen? Hey, God bless you. We love you. Aloha.